Hey, what's up guys? So we are going to create a trajectory line or an aim line in Unity. And getting a solid line in there is really, really easy. So if you want something that looks a little bit nicer, I'll show you how to animate our aim line in Shader Graph. And we will do that completely from scratch. So here's our opening scene. This is exactly where we left off from a 2D shooting tutorial I made not too long ago. So if you wanna know how to set up your projectiles like they are in this project, then I'll put a card right here. On the bazooka object here, let's create a child object for the trajectory line and add a line renderer component, which is how we'll draw the trajectory line. Create a new script called trajectory line and add it to our game object. So we're going to create a smooth curved line by just adding enough points to our line renderer in order for it to appear smooth. So let's create an int for our number of points and also an array of vector twos to hold the position of each of those points. Let's initialize the vector2 array to have the same length as our segment count. Next, we need to grab a reference to our line renderer and set the number of points that the line renderer has to be equal to our segment count. And in order to properly compute the physics of our projectile's velocity, we'll need to know the speed that we launched the bullet and the gravity scale applied to its rigid body. For me, these are sitting in my bullet behavior script, but I can't assign those in the inspector because it's attached to a prefab game object. So instead, I'll grab a reference to my player aim and shoot script and grab the bullet behavior from that. And then I can grab the physics bullet speed and physics bullet gravity from there. We'll also need a reference to our bullet spawn point as well as a float for our curve length. So in our update function, first we'll set the starting position of the line renderer, meaning its very first point, which is at index zero. We'll set the start position to be equal to our bullet spawn point's position and update the first index of our segment's vector to array to equal that starting position and then set the actual first point on our line renderer to be equal to that starting position. We've got a little physics calculation coming up and in order to calculate it properly, we need to know our projectile's starting velocity. In our bullet behavior script, I simply set the bullet's rigid body velocity to be equal to our transform.write times our physics bullet speed. This trajectory line object is a child of our player. So as long as your player turns around in such a way that your transform.write updates when they turn around, meaning this red arrow points in his facing direction, then this line is what we can use. So our starting velocity will equal our transform.write times our projectile speed. Create a for loop, but set i equal to one since we already calculated the first index's position and set the length to be equal to the segment count. First, let's calculate a time offset by multiplying our current index by time.fixed delta time times our curve length that we set in the inspector. Next, we'll calculate our gravity offset. And for this physics calculation, we'll need to add 0.5 to physics2d.gravity, but I really hate arbitrary numbers in my code, so let's create a constant float variable to hold that since it will never change, and multiply this by our projectile gravity times our time offset twice, which we can do by multiplying time offset to the power of two. Finally, we have all the physics done, so we just need to apply this to our line renderer. So we'll update our segments first by taking the first index plus the start velocity times our time offset plus our gravity offset. And finally, we can set the position on the line renderer itself. Let's assign these in the inspector. Now let's create a new sprite lit default material and assign a square to the texture. You can click this little eye icon over here if one doesn't show up for you and assign the material here. If you leave your texture mode to stretch, that's fine. You can thin out this line if you want and add 90 to our end cap vertices so that it's round around the edges if you want. But now I'd really like to take this a step further because this doesn't really look the best. You're going to need a simple circle texture with a little bit of space around it. I have a couple of circles included in my textures folder here, which is included in my free art package you can download in the link below. All the art assets in that package are completely free to you to use in any way that you want, even commercially. But whatever circle you use, make sure that you set its wrap mode to repeat or the shader will not work properly. Let's create a new sprite lit shader graph. You can make it unlit also if you want. It just depends on whether or not you want your line to be affected by 2D lights or not. So first, we just want to be able to display our circle. So let's create a texture 2D and assign that circle to it by default. Now let's drag that in. And in order to actually see it, we need to sample it out. And right off the bat, let's drag our color output into the base color and our alpha output into the alpha under our fragment. Now, this is great and all, but I'd like to be able to actually animate and move these dots along our path. And to do that, we need to be able to tile and offset our texture. So create that node and drag its output into the UV input in our sample texture 2D. Now you can see that tiling obviously tiles it and offset allows you to repeat it if you change the sprite import settings like I mentioned earlier. 
So first, it'd be nice to be able to directly control the tiling. So let's create a float with a default of 100 and make it a slider that goes between 50 and 300. Now, we only care about tiling the X, so let's plug this into a vector2 node, make sure the Y is a 1, and then plug that into our tiling input. Let's create a new material using this shader and assign it. Now, if we leave it on stretch, it yields pretty good results. If you make the width nice and small, you get more of a dashed line look, which looks great. But my issue is if we set the width back to one, you can see up here that we get some pretty weird artifacting happening. And I have not been able to eliminate this completely, but by changing our texture mode to distribute per segment, it's at least a little better. I find toning down the width really helps with this though. Back in our shader, let's get this thing animating. Add an exposed bool so that we have an easy option to either use it or not. And to do that, add a branch node. We add our bool value into the predicate input, and then we'll add the output of all of our animation logic into the true input. So we'll start by adding a time node. We obviously want to be able to control the animation speed, so add one more float with a default of 1, and let's make it a slider between 0 and 20. So to control our speed, we'll multiply our time by our animation speed negated. If we don't add this negate node, then our line animates in the wrong direction. Now we want to be able to plug this branch output into the offset input over here in the tiling and offset node. So we need this to be a vector two. So drag the output into a vector two, make sure it's going into the X and that the Y is set to zero. Now finally, we can drag that output into the true input on the branch node. Make sure our false is set to zero on the X and Y. So what this means is that if we select this bool in the inspector, then this branch node will offset our sprite based on everything we did over here. But if it's not checked, it'll just plug in a vector 2.0. Go ahead and plug the output of the branch into the offset input on the tiling and offset node. And there you go. One last thing, if you select this, then it's gonna tell you to subscribe. Like if you liked, Dislike if you didn't. I want to thank Yaku Biondok, Zandra Kessler, and Darren Perrine for your generous support over on Patreon. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And if you want to help support us, head over to Patreon for monthly alpha builds, early access to all our videos, and more.